for most Netflix specials, unless you're like Dave Chappelle or Kevin Hart, most don't even hit 500,000 views. Most on Showtime are like 300,000. HBO is like 100 to 150,000, right? He had a million people watch his special. Very funny. He's a pharmacist. He's hilarious. Y'all show some love for LeVar Walker! Thank you, Kevin. Uh, this is my second time here. I only came back, uh, Kevin, just to tell your fans that I'm not Judge Mathis. And I'm tired of, <laughs> I'm tired of niggas looking at me. You Judge Mathis, do right? you look like a crackhead, huh? Is that? <laughs> well, I'm happy to be back in LA. I got here, uh, one of my good friends picked me up and uh, he, he picked me up. He had some gummies for me. Um, it was, and gave me the gummy at approximately 12.01. <laughs> Six hours later, it was 12.02. <laughs> I said, this nigga's trying to kill me. You, you ever take a gummy where you, you can talk, but you can't move your lips? Like, I'm just sitting there, what the hug is going on right there? This is some bullshit. So as I'm sitting there high, I watched a man in downtown L.A. build a six-bedroom, two-and-a-half-bath <laughs> cardboard house. I never saw a, a homeless nigga put a basement on a house. And I said, where am I? I saw something interesting on Instagram. Uh, I saw something very interesting. Magic Johnson had posted a picture of himself getting the COVID shot. I'm going to step over here and say that again. <laughs> I noticed that Magic Johnson had posted a picture of himself getting the COVID shot. Now, as Kev said, I happen to be a pharmacist. I have had to administer COVID shots. And I'm going to tell you guys right here today, I'm going to be real with you. If Magic Johnson was to walk in CVS <laughs> to get a COVID shot, I'd look him dead in his eye and say, nigga, you good. You don't need this goddamn <laughs> shit. Well, you, nigga, you done beat HIV. What the fuck is you in here for? This shit ain't about to kill you. You got the goddamn immune system of an X-Man, and you in here to get this shit. You're taking this shot from somebody that needs it, Magic. <laughs> now get the fuck out of the way so I can give Flavor Flav his goddamn shot. <laughs> you know Flavor Flav needed the shot. That nigga was born with COVID. Shit, he had it his whole time. Speaking of HIV, it just seemed like HIV and AIDS quit. It just said they... Hey man, fuck this shit, man. <laughs> like AIDS, like nigga, I was the man, nigga, in the 80s, nigga. I took out motherfucking Easy E in this motherfucker, man. <laughs> now this bitch had COVID shit, nigga, now I can't even get my shine on no more. <laughs> man, they just packed they shit and left, nigga. The... They gone. I was watching that Michael Jordan documentary. I love Michael Jordan. I'm from Chicago. I love Michael Jordan, man. This is my hero, you know? But nobody seems to acknowledge the yellowing of this nigga's eyes. <laughs> the man is clearly dying from jaundice and nobody cares. You telling me Nike can't make this nigga a pancreas, huh? Where are we right now? <laughs> I'm disgusted. I'm from the south side of Chicago. The homicide rate is through the roof. It's ridiculous. Brothers are killing each other and shit. It's just sad in my neighborhood, man. And I know that gas is going up high, and that's why I want to propose how to solve the homicide rate in Chicago. If I was in charge, 
This is what I would propose. Every time a nigga is shot and killed, we jack up gas $10 a fucking gallon. There's going to come a point with somebody there's going to be a shootout and somebody will be like, hey, man, stop. <laughs> Put the fucking guns away. <laughs> Gas is $80 a gallon. <laughs> I got to go to work. <laughs> How much longer are we going to kill one another? <laughs> and then that nigga get shot. Pow, pow. <laughs> hey, bro, gas is now $90 a gallon. We have to stop. <laughs> Hopefully we can we can solve crime in my community. That is that is literally one of my major proposals. I'm glad all y'all gathered here today because you know we are we are the end of times, you know. Pretty soon we, we won't be together because Mark Zuckerberg is no, for real, Mark Zuckerberg has come out with this thing called the, the metaverse. Now, if you don't know what the metaverse is, let me explain the metaverse to you. The metaverse is a digital altered reality. In this place, you can be whoever you want to be. You want to be a big, tall nigga, dick on the floor. <laughs> That's who you can be. Because we have to understand that every time you look at your phone, you get a little dopamine hit from the brain. You, you excited, you happy. But now with the metaverse, they want to take your brain and put it in a fucking jar of dopamine to overstimulate you. Nobody's going to want to leave the metaverse. You a fucking kingpin in the metaverse. You're not going <laughs> You're not going to go work at fucking Amazon. You're not. be anybody you want to be. You'll see your friends in there. You won't even know who they are till they talk. <laughs> You'll see a, a dragon with titties and <laughs> fire coming out of the nipples. And the dragon will look at you, it's me. <laughs> I'm like, Tony, that's you? Yeah, nigga. I always wanted to be a fire-breathing dragon with titties. <laughs> Nigga, I'm beautiful. I can fly. And the <laughs> <laughs> and the only reason you mad at him because you a fire-breathing dragon with titties. <laughs> like, man, this nigga done stole my whole shit. <laughs> my mama thinks I'm more famous than I am. That is embarrassing. I went home to Chicago, my mama introduced me. Do you know what it's like when your parents think you're more famous than you are? You know how humiliating that is? <laughs> this my this my son. This my son, the comedian, this LeVar. Oh, you don't you don't know him? She don't they don't know you, baby. I don't God damn, I thought somebody knew you. Come on, shit. I, I'm sorry, I apologize. She apologizing for me not being fat. I'm so sorry, I didn't know nobody knew. You gonna have to get some more followers, shit. I didn't. It's embarrassing me. <laughs> My mom and dad have an interesting relationship. They've been married now for 40, 43 years, man. They've been married a long time. And I'm married myself. I've been married for about 14. And a friend of mine I was on the phone with, him, he said, hey, man, I'm glad you called me. Levi, man, I, I've, been, I've been married for about three years now, man. What advice can you give me to have a successful marriage? And I, and I gave him two words. Take it. Don't you fucking argue. Just take that shit. That's how you win. But my mom and dad, they've been together for a long time. And uh, 
you know, sometimes my mom would call me and try to put me in the middle of their shit, you know. And I, I don't, I don't, it's awkward. And she called the phone. <laughs> Hello? Hey, LeVar, it's your mama. I'm like, mama, I got call ID. I know. <laughs> I just want to call you, LeVar. <laughs> like, what's up, mama? It's your damn daddy. Let me tell you what he be doing. He, listen, when we out in public, uh, when we out in public or around people, if I, he is very nice and kind. <laughs> but when we alone, he mean as hell. <laughs> I went down in the baby. I said, Herman, you want to go walk in the park? He going to tell me, hell no, nah, we're walking on goddamn park. <laughs> I said, all right, mama. You, you, want, you want to speak to him? <laughs> Then he pick up the phone. You. And every time my dad pick up the phone, I hear a little struggle. The phone. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> hey, Dad, what's going on? Hey, boy, just just sat uh, down here loving your mama. You know, I I put a little something on the grill before I made it some uh, just sit here. I made it put a little steak on there. Put some rose petals down and everything. I say, really, Daddy? Yeah, you know I love that woman, boy. <laughs> I say, cause she say you treat her mean when it's just y'all. Oh, boy, you know your mama crazy. <laughs> you know your mama crazy. I love that woman to death, boy. Yeah, you talking about? I say, okay, Dad. All right, all right, Dad. Yep. Okay. All right, son. <laughs> all right, Dad. Yep. Uh huh. O okay, Dad. I talk to you. All right, I talk to you. Now he thought he hung up the phone. <laughs> but I could still, I could still hear him. But as soon as he thought he hung up, this all I heard. Bitch, did you tell that boy we having problems? <laughs> See, you better quit putting them kids in our goddamn dinner. LeVar, did you hit? I just hung up. I was like, I don't, I can't. <laughs> in 43 years, the shit is obviously working. <laughs> oh boy. So people ask me, they say, LeVar, did you quit being a pharmacist? I said, no, I just never went back. <laughs> I got tired of fucking arguing with people over 50 cent co pays. <laughs> Goddamn co pay, 50 fucking cents. Now you are wasting my time to have this fucking discussion. <laughs> I rang a lady up the other day, and she's on Medicaid, Medicaid patient, you know? I don't have nothing, nobody on Medicaid. I grew up on Medicaid, you know? Rang up. She had six medications. The shit was a dollar, one dollar. Say, hey, ma'am, for all six meds, going to be a dollar. <gasps> a dollar? Sir, I don't have a dollar. <laughs> well, bitch, you about to die today. Because if you ain't got four quarters of ten dimes, you don't deserve to be on the earth and get this fucking Louis Vuitton bag and get the fuck out of here. Your health priorities are fucked up. My name is LeVar Walker, man. Thank y'all.